Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever the case may be. Welcome to the last module of 2016 HIPAA 101 Privacy and Security Training. There'll be some other things thrown in with that, but my name is Dan Wallenhurst. I'm the Safety and Compliance Officer at Echoing Hills Village. <clears throat> Today we're going to be talking about HIPAA 101, Vehicle Safety and Lifts, Workplace Violence, Firearms Policy, the Whistleblow Policy, and also a little snippet on winter weather preparations. So today, what is HIPAA? Your HIPAA's organiza your organization's HIPAA, how HIPAA affects you, protecting the correct information, and safer computing practices, and last but not least, reporting a breach. So what is HIPAA? HIPAA is the acronym that stands for the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. It is a federal law <clears throat> that sp has specifics for administrative simplification provisions. The high tech is also associated with the HIPAA Act and it was implemented in 2009. This is largely the part that talks about the internet access and keeping our electronic devices safe. There are fines and penalties associated with HIPAA and we're gonna discuss those a little bit farther later but keep in mind that there is some HIPAA issues that you need to be concerned about um, <clears throat> right here. Uh, some of the penalties, the criminal penalties, the civil penalties, and the state laws that are involved. How the HIPAA law applies to you. HIPAA requires that all staff members be trained on the HIPAA policies and specific procedures which may affect the work you do. These rules apply when you, <clears throat> while you are at work and not at work and how you're supposed to share or use protected health information or PHI, which we'll be referencing in the future. Who uses PHI? Anyone who works with or may have may view health, financial, or confidential information with HIPAA protected information identifiers. <clears throat> the following staff members would be included. Administrative staff, volunteers, business associates, the SSAs, and the COG staff, accounting and payroll. Almost everyone at one time or another is involved with HIPAA. All right, today we're gonna to be talking about HIPAA. Can anybody tell me what HIPAA stands for? Looks like hippo to me. Is it Hippocrates or Hiipa? Yo, yo, yo. Check it. Man, yeah, we know what hippo is. As a nurse, we must protect our patients' rights by advocating and putting up fights against those who are unauthorized so they don't go around telling no lies. HIPAA stands for Health Information Privacy Accountability Act. We protect patients' rights by putting a pack. Even if the person is a celebrity, we hush our mouths or we pay a fee. So can we talk about patients with our friends? Only if we want our careers to end. What about leaving our EMARs open? Heck no, girl, you gotta be joking. Look who shows up, it's Angelina Brad Pitt, and I'm not the one who's doing the admin. So I must say, I'm curious, of course. Too bad that violates the HIPAA resource. So mind your own business and go about your day. Angelina and Brad, you'll be okay. They have a nurse and know you ain't it. So just pretend you didn't even see it. Don't want to disappoint Miss Morell, so I'll comply with HIPAA and I won't tell. I also might like my license and I want to stay a nurse, so I'll protect patients' rights with this verse. You think this rap is silly? Maybe a little dumb. How would you like it if you cut off your thumb? Doing something stupid, something you didn't want to share, and all the nurses going around talking about your care. Hospitals are about caring, not putting peeps on blast. So keep your mouth shut, or you'll be fired fast. <laughs> when you think of HIPAA, you better think of us. This rap is to remind you, all you have to do is hush. Word to your clinical instructors. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> what information must be protected? Uh, you must protect the individual's PHI, which is collected or created as a sequence of a healthcare provider. PHI is information related to an individual's past, present, or future, or physical or mental health or condition. It can be in any form, uh, written, spoken, electronic, including video, 
photographs and x-rays, or social media, which is a really important aspect of this, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This rule also applies to you when you view, use, or share PHI. Any health information which identifies uh, one of the, on the following page is protected health information or PHI. As you'll see here, there are 18 identifiers. So look at these closely. Uh, it could be a name, postal address, all elements of dates except year, a phone number, fax number, email address. So you can see there's a lot of things here that could be. A Medicaid record number is also part of that. So make sure you're looking at this, including full face photos and other comparable images. Except for treatment, always remember use the minimum necessary because that's what applies in this particular case. For individual care and treatment, HIPAA does not impose restrictions on use and disclose of PHI by healthcare providers. There are a few exceptions here. So there's our psychotherapy information, HIV tests, and substance abuse information. For anything else, HIPAA requires users, users to use minimum necessary as they perform their duties. <clears throat> Remember, Use only necessary information to perform your job duties. Use only the minimum necessary to perform your job duties. Echoing Hills Village policies and procedures for information and confidential security and ask your supervisor for your department's privacy and security procedures or policy. Verbal exchanges. Ask yourself, what if what were my information being discussed like this? Individuals may see normal clinical operations as violating their privacy. <clears throat> Be aware that you're surrounded of your surroundings when you're talking about private information. We actually had a breach in 2016 of two individuals at one of our locations and they were talking about a certain individual that was being treated at that location. Now at that location they were having this conversation and a parent overheard that conversation and reported it to the administrator at that particular location and we actually had to create an incident report over that and I'm reporting that as a breach for 2016. <clears throat> know where you left your paperwork. We had an incident a couple of years ago where we got a fax from actually a county board at one of our locations and it wasn't intended for our fax machine but it came across there anyways. That's a case where I need to be notified and then I will provide some direction on how we're going to handle that situation. So what we did in that particular case, well, we notified the sender that it did come in correctly, we documented it, um, created an incident report out of it and made sure that that entity that sent us the wrong facts was aware to be more careful in the future about how they're handling paper documents. Okay, don't leave hard copies laying around. Secure documents in a locked car if you must transport them. I had an incident just this summer. I had an individual nurse at one of our locations. She came up to me and she said, um, guess where my laptop's at? So I was thinking the worst. Okay, where is her laptop at? This is not a good sign because I'm thinking maybe she lost it. Okay, she went on to say, it's locked in my trunk. That's exactly the answer that it should be. When you are transporting your electronic equipment, laptops, other things like that, and if it's necessary to take those home, make sure if you stop at Walmart on the way home that that computer is secure in your trunk. Do not leave it in where visually someone can see it in your car. <clears throat> Disposal of paper documents. It is a good thing that it looks like uh, a lot of us are, have contracts with organizations now where we have a drop box where we're just dropping those in lock boxes instead of using shredders because the shredding thing got a little bit cumbersome. So at least we're putting them in drop boxes now where those are secure and properly being disposed of by the companies we're hiring to do that. Make sure you're, again, daily gossip, daily trash, and any public information that any public places where information might be shared, but we really don't want that information going out. Okay, privacy breach from a lost, stolen, or misdirected information. A privacy breach can occur when information is physically lost or stolen. Uh, it could be paper copies, it could be electronic device, uh, or misdirected from organizations outside Echoing Hills Village. Make sure that I'm aware of that. The first thing you want to do is notify your supervisor if you feel there's been a breach involved with PHI or protected health information. And that supervisor will work its way up on the chain and it actually land on my desk and I'll determine who needs to be notified at that time. <clears throat> Examples of privacy breaches, talking in public areas, talking too loudly, talking to the wrong person, 
Social media. This is a big one. Social media. Do not be posting things on social media. Lost, stolen, or improperly disposed of paper, mail, or notebooks, and lost, stolen laptops. We actually have things in place now through our IT department where we can go in and track down that laptop or that phone or that device, and we can either shut them down or wipe them pretty quickly. Email and faxes. Remember I said earlier we had the wrong fax to the wrong place, and it wasn't even ours, but we still are responsible for taking corrective action on that. When you think of HIPAA compliance, think of a three-legged stool. Okay, uh, every couple of years we have to do what's called an internal review as the one leg, and that's done by our IT department. You don't need to concern yourself with that. Uh, we do have a policy now, which we worked pretty diligently on last year, and so we're going to talk about that a little bit and some of the repercussions that can happen with that. And we're also going to talk about the training, which we're doing today. So being HIPAA compliant, we need to have this stool supported by these three key legs. Recommended disciplinary actions. This is really important because if you're watching this today, don't come back and say too much from now that you weren't aware there was disciplinary action involved with leaking HIPAA information or disclosing that where it shouldn't be. We now have a policy in place, and these are the key points as far as the disciplinary portion of that. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to read it to you so you can't say you didn't know it. I recommend a disciplinary actions. In the event a work force member violates EHVI's HIPAA and security policies and or violates the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996 or related state laws governing the protection of sensitive and patient identifiable information, the following recommended disciplinary actions will apply. Okay, uh, important note, the recommendation, recommended disciplinary actions are defined in order to provide guidance in policy enforcement and not meant to be all inclusive. In other words, there's certain levels. Okay, if you deliberately steal information from Echoing Hills Village and share it with another entity, and we actually had this happen also at one of our locations in 2016, where an employee took information, made copies, and took it to the county board in a complaint type form. All right, and became an MUI, and actually that person, who's no longer an employee of ours, uh, could be in very deep trouble for that. So don't take information out of the building. Okay, depending on the severity of the violation, any single act may result in disciplinary action. And these are the references here. This is not me. This is the Department of Health and Human Services mandating that we do this. Okay, so here it is. Violation level is violation written one. Okay, it's a written reprimand. Uh, retaining on privacy and security, retraining on privacy and security awareness, retaining on EHVI's privacy and security policies, retraining on the proper use of internal forms. Okay, then we go to written two, and it doesn't have to be the same thing as up here. It could just be another one of those, all right? So this is the level two, and then actually you can be terminated for violating this. So here it is. Uh, civil penalties as provided under HIPAA or other applicable federal, state, and local law. Criminal penalties as provided under HIPAA or other applicable federal law. So as you can see, it gets a little bit uh, more uh, extreme as you move down the list there. Okay, what are these levels? Level one is accessing information you do not need to know about to do your job. Level two, level one, uh, level one again, sharing computer access codes. So don't be giving your access codes to another person so they can go in and do some of the things that you need to do and trying to get some of those things off your desk. Okay, uh, <clears throat> don't leave your computer unattended. Don't disclose sensitive information with unauthorized persons. Don't copy sensitive information without authorization. Changing sensitive information without authorization. Uh, discussion about sensitive information. Uh, discussing sensitive information with an unauthorized person, okay, or failing or refusing to cooperate with the information of the security officer, privacy officer, or chief information officer, or that's me, okay? Uh, the second level, uh, the second currents, and it can be in combination of any of these things. It doesn't have to be a repetitive uh, violation of the same one, okay? And then level three is your third occurrence, and that's the worst that's probably going to happen. It means you're probably a habitual chatter on Facebook, and, and we're simply not going to tolerate that.
ever imagine posting something on Facebook from home from her own computer on her own time would get her fired. He died for us, protecting us. Like so many others, Cheryl James was emotional following the shooting death of Taylor Police Corporal Matthew Edwards. She worked for the hospital organization that treated the police officer and the shooting suspect Tyrese Matthews. One night, while at home, she posted on Facebook that she came face to face with a cop killer and hoped he rotted in hell. She also posted another remark we can't repeat. Tuesday, she got a call. Her bosses wanted to talk. They called me in, told me that they got notice and word that I had posted this specific post on Facebook mm -hmm. and that they had to investigate it. Jane says she immediately removed the posting and thought she might get written up or suspended. Instead, she got fired. The reason they gave me was that I violated HIPAA regulations by disseminating protected health information about a patient on a public forum, being Facebook, and that it also included disparaging and disrespectful remarks. Late this afternoon, a representative for Oakwood Hospital released this statement, which reads in part, as health care providers, we have a legal and ethical responsibility to protect patient privacy, and we are bound by HIPAA rules and regulations to ensure that we do so. While we cannot discuss specific details regarding any current or former employee, we all have a legal and ethical responsibility to put our personal opinions aside and provide the care required for any patient who has entrusted us with their health. I am familiar with HIPAA. I did not give out any of his information. I did not give out his name. I did not mention the hospital. You know, I did not give out his condition. James is still reeling from losing her job. She doesn't believe her actions warranted being fired. She has two small kids and her husband can't work. And while her feelings about the accused cop killer haven't changed, she says she'll think twice about what she posts on Facebook in the future. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Would I take back what I did? No. Would I do it in a different manner? Maybe. James is planning to fight her termination. And Taylor, Ronnie Dahl, Fox 2 News. <clears throat> okay, you want to report privacy breaches. Report to your supervisor first. Okay, if you think something is a breach, please report that immediately. All right, and that person will in turn reach out to me, uh, the security officer, and report any known or suspected privacy breaches. Let me decide whether they're privacy breaches or not. Okay, you don't have to sort through all that mess. If you're not sure, report it to your supervisor. They'll report it to their supervisor. It'll work up to me, and then we'll make that decision. Okay, a little music, bad boys, bad boys, what you're going to do, you're going to get reported to the HIPAA security officer. I won't come in this outfit, but just please remember that if someone walks in the building and they say, who is your HIPAA security officer, don't say, I don't know. Okay, my kids say that. They're 40 years old, they still say that. Okay. Say, yes, we have one. I can't remember his name, but it's this silly guy that put the cowboy hat on, and he has white hair, and he works down at the corporate office. Don't say you don't have one, because you do have one, and it's me. Okay, we're going to change gears here just a little bit and turn to the Echoing Hills Village wheelchair policy and strategy. Okay, we're going to review the current policy. We're going to review the training video. We're going to determine a logical approach. We're going to review a short crash test, and we're going to determine logical, logical format for securing the wheelchairs and the vehicles. And then we're going to implement this procedure. Okay, Echoing Hills Village, this is our policy. We are committed to providing trained personnel and well-maintained equipment in all company vehicles. Every lift must be inspected. Okay. Make sure it's documented and it must be reported and repairs prior to use. So make sure if you see any issues that you go those reported to the proper people so we can get those issues resolved. We do not want faulty equipment out of there because we do have an occasional accident. Okay, they should have a monthly inspection and the cleaning of the floor tracks and moving equipment. <clears throat> 
Okay, and all of these things must be included in the monthly respect inspection report. Okay, wheelchairs. All lifts must be operated per manufacturer recommendations. Loads placed on lifts must not exceed the capacity specified for the manufacturer. Okay, what are the load lifts? In your vans, I believe we have almost all brawn lifts. There are a couple of Rikons floating around out there. All of those are 800 pound capacity. When I made the decision probably a couple years ago, they increased the load capacity on certain models of lifts. I went ahead and rolled those out. However, they are only on the shuttle buses. They cannot put the 1,000 pound capacity lift in a minivan or a short van. So the lift uh, capacities on the vans are 800 pounds. The lifts on the new shuttles that we're getting are 1,000 pounds. <clears throat> All of us know the width and the length of the wheelchairs and the lift platforms are changing, okay? The wheelchairs are getting larger. Whenever possible, wheels should be located facing outward away from the vehicle. In other words, you should be backing them on there. However, you're going to see in the Braun video there are cases where we need to put those on forward. Okay, when do we need to do that? The last person going into a van with a rear entry cannot be loaded facing backwards because there's no room to turn them around. So they must be loaded facing forward. There was some confusion about this a couple years ago. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. <clears throat> Operation and requirement. No vehicle shall be parked or unattended while the lift is in the deployed position. Staff volunteers involved, staff and volunteers involved in loading of residents and lift operations must be trained during orientation and leased at once annually thereafter. Do not stand on the lift with the occupants while the lift is in motion. Please just don't do that. Only a staff or volunteers age 16 or over may operate a vehicle lift. All right. <clears throat> and only after completing the required training. Training will be done by the trainer assigned by the regional director. Wheelchair tie downs. Wheelchair tie down devices must be in good operational condition and shall not exhibit signs of fraying, slipping, <clears throat> or rats are having problems with the ratchets there, okay? Most of them now are the automatic tie-downs. There's still some of the old ratchet models around, but we're gradually getting away from that and going to the auto-tightening ratchet type uh, tie-downs. All right, if there's a shoulder belt in, available, make sure they're wearing that, okay? Uh, the belt clips must fit securely and the wheelchair brakes must be applied if the wheelchair is equipped with manual brakes. Electric wheelchairs must be switched to the power off mode and the clutches must be engaged. All of the key functions of your Millennium Lift are easily and conveniently controlled using the on-off control switch mounted on the outboard face of the pump module. And the up-down and fold-unfold rocker switches on the Millennium handheld pendant control. To operate the lift, check to be sure the on-off switch is in the on position. Then simply use the handheld pendant to choose the appropriate functions. To unload a passenger from the vehicle, begin by securing the vehicle door to avoid interference during lift operation. Confirm that the power on-off switch shows a green power indicator to signal that you're ready to activate the lift. Assuming that you have a green light, move away from the door to clear the area for the platform to fully unfold. Then press and hold the unfold button on your pendant control, and the lift will move out of its storage position. Notice that as the unfold button is pressed and the platform is fully extended, the lift's mechanical inner barrier automatically rotates to the horizontal position to form a smooth transition between the vehicle floor and platform. Once the platform is fully extended and motion stops, release the unfold switch. In the event the platform does not unfold from the stowed position, simply press the fold switch to fully fold the platform which will in turn release the lift tight latches. Then press the unfold switch and the lift should unfold with no further hesitation. Once the platform is fully deployed, be sure the inner barrier rests solidly on the vehicle floor. 
and check to be sure that the outer barrier is fully raised and locked. Also be sure that your passenger's safety restraints are securely fastened. Then guide your passenger onto the platform, being sure to keep the wheelchair between the yellow boundaries. Once fully boarded, engage the wheelchair brakes. Turn power off to powered wheelchairs and ask the passenger to hold the handrails if possible. Note that the Millennium Lift can accommodate passengers who prefer to face inward. However, Braun recommends the outward position because of the enhanced sense of security it provides for passengers. The Millennium can also accommodate passengers who use walkers or canes or cannot navigate steps into the vehicle. In all cases, however, it is critical that passengers, whether sitting or standing, are positioned at the center of the platform within the yellow boundaries to help ensure that they have cleared the vehicle bridge and are in the proper position for side-to-side -side load balance and smooth movement of the platform. Once the passenger is in position, press and hold the down button on your handheld control until the entire platform reaches ground level and the outer barrier unfolds completely. When all movement has stopped, unlock wheelchair brakes, switch on wheelchair power if necessary, and unload the passenger from the platform. To load a passenger, start with the platform at ground level and the outer barrier fully extended. Move the passenger onto the lift platform and into position within the yellow boundaries. Again, lock the wheelchair brakes, turn off wheelchair power on powered chairs, and have the passenger hold the lift's handrails if possible for additional support. While being sure to stand clear of the lift, press and hold the up switch on the pendant control. This will allow the outer barrier to move to the upright and locked position, and the platform to rise to vehicle floor level. The lift will stop at floor level automatically, and the inner barrier will move to the horizontal or bridging position. Once the lift has stopped completely, re-engage power to power chairs, disengage wheelchair brakes, and move the passenger into the vehicle compartment. To return the platform to its storage position, be sure both the lift and storage areas are clear. Then simply press and hold the Fold button on your handheld pendant until the platform is fully stowed and all motion stops. Check to make sure your vehicle doors are fully closed and secured. If returning the platform to its storage position from ground level, check to be sure the platform area and vehicle storage area are clear. Then simply press and hold the Up button until the platform reaches vehicle floor height and all movement stops. Then press and hold the Fold button again until all motion stops. Then again, close and secure your vehicle doors. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, talk a little bit more about this. That showed the basics of the operational part, but let's understand how we load the vehicle. Whenever possible, wheelchairs should be loaded face, facing outward. And I'm going to tell you why, because some of these wheelchairs are really heavy. And when we get all that weight of an electric wheelchair back on the outside of one of those lifts, it can get a little shaky. Now, it will handle it, but we get much more life out of our lifts if you actually bring them on backwards. And I see this done a lot on the shuttle buses, which is good. But there are cases on the vans where we just have to face them forward going in. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, wheelchairs may be loaded facing inward when it makes sense, and that's what we just talked about. For instance, it may be the last wheelchair on the van, and it would be possible to do that. There was some confusion a couple of years ago about how to load the vehicles, okay? And the confusion evolved to the point, and I think it was one employee sharing with another, they were actually loading everybody backwards, and they were actually had them facing backwards, looking out the back window of the van. Do not do this, okay? The wheelchair tie-downs are not designed to stop somebody or to catch them or restrain them if they're facing the back of the van. 
Bottom line is, they were riding down the street, looking out the back window. They didn't know where they were going, but they sure knew where they'd been. Okay, so we don't want them doing that. It's not a safe condition to have, but that condition evolved, and it was actually at two locations. I actually physically saw this happen, and to go back and make sure we reminded those folks not to have people facing backwards in our high top vans, okay? Do not restrain them that way. Do not put your tie downs down that way. Make sure they're all facing forwards. There's no sound of this, but this is a short uh, crash test and it just illustrates why they need all to be facing forward. It's just about a 30 second clip, so, but it has a, has a pretty good impact on it. So summary, whenever possible, wheelchairs should be loaded facing outward, away from the vehicle. Special circumstances permit loading a wheelchair passenger facing the vehicle. Uh, and we already talked about that a little bit. All passengers must be secured facing the front of the vehicle. Please, don't let me see that again. This is a little segment I like to call the good, the bad, and the ugly of our vehicle transportation. Uh, the good part is Echoing Hills Village logs nearly 900,000 business miles annually. I just checked that out the other day. <clears throat> I used the Super Fleet cards, and uh, we're doing it. We're closing in on a million miles a year, okay? Uh, we have nearly 360 approved drivers. And we are operating nearly 83 vehicles corporate-wide. So our safety record is actually pretty good. But, like I said, the good, the bad, the ugly, this is the good. Here's the bad. We had this situation happen twice in the organization where a person in a wheelchair went, was moved out the back of the van and the wheelchair lift was in the lower position. In other words, they fell about 30 inches, about the height of any table that you're sitting at today. All right, so imagine having a wheelchair up on the table, you're sitting around, and someone actually pushing that wheelchair off backwards, and you're in it. Okay, happened twice. I didn't think it was possible. It is. I'm working on it, but it's going to be a long-term fix. This is not going to be a short fix, but this is one of my priorities for 2017. Here's a little closer up picture of it. Fortunately, the wheel is actually caught on the back plate, and both individuals that went out the back of our vans were actually going backwards. If they'd have been going frontwards, it would have been a much different story. So that's the bad. Here's the ugly. Okay, this accident happened on October 14th up in the Stark County area. I was on the scene uh, very shortly after the ambulances got there as they were putting an instructor and a student in an ambulance. I was glad they were conscious. Okay, it was not the driver's fault. It was another dropper of the other vehicle, ran a stop sign, hit our vehicle, causing it to go up on two wheels and go over in this ditch and flip over upside down. I expected the worst when I went upon this scene. That was the very first picture I took. Okay. Just a re stark reminder, please wear your seat belts. Please make sure you're in control of the vehicle at all times. Please be aware of your surroundings and please do not text and drive. Let's move to workplace violence. <clears throat> Echoing Hills Village is committed to maintaining a residence and workplace that is free from violence, and we have a zero tolerance on this. Okay, we are here to protect our individuals, and we're gonna protect our employees. Okay, all employees, volunteers, visitors, and the residents of families we serve have the right to expect a safe place to be, a safe place to visit, a safe place to occupy. Okay, what's it supposed to be safe from? It's safe from harassing, abusive, disorderly, or disruptive uh, type of an, an environment. 
in any violent behavior or behavior that creates a climate of violence, hostility, or intimidation will not be tolerated, regardless of origin. Proactive measures will be taken to minimize the potential of workplace violence. Okay, you might say I have an ex-boyfriend or ex-spouse uh, that's stalking me and they're parked in the parking lot. You need to let somebody know about that. Okay, because we cannot possibly protect everybody in the building if we do not know what's going on on the outside or what may be going on in your personal life. Okay, workplace and violence would include but not limited to the following behaviors or situations. <clears throat> Violent or threatening physical contact, including fights, pushing, shoving, or physical intimidation. Direct or indirect thoughts. Threatening, abusive, or harassing phone calls. Use of a weapon or ordinance, including decoys or a plastic gun, to threaten or intimidate. Threatening, abusive, uh, harassing emails, text messages, or other forms of communication. All right, destructive or sabotaging actions against a company or employee's personal property. We've had issues about that also, where people's cars have been damaged in the parking lot, and they have a pretty good idea who it is. Please make sure that gets reported to us so we can keep an eye on that and have some vigilance about that and make sure we have the local police involved in that. Uh, any form of stalking, including electronic stalking, phone, Facebook, or Twitter, violation of a protective or restraining order. If you have a restraining order against somebody and you're an employee of ours, please let us know so everybody can be aware of that so we can watch out for everybody. A threatening act or abusive or profane language that leads to tension or fear within the work environment. Okay, all employees are responsible for reporting any workplace violent behaviors or situations even if they are unsure if an actual threat or situation has taken place. Please share this with your supervisor so we can take appropriate action and at least give everybody a heads up on what's going on. Even without an actual threat, employees should be reporting these things. Employees are required to immediately report any issues or perceived issues of workplace violence to their administrator or designee in situations where the administrator is not available. All right, do this immediately, please. Okay, in situations where there's immediate threat or violence is taking place, employees should dial 911 first for immediate help, and then uh, we'll, we'll follow up with the action with the administrator. Once an employee has reported a situation, the administrator or designee must immediately assess the situation, then take steps to protect the employees and individuals and report the information to the corporate office as listed above. Okay, any employee or person making threats, exhibits threatening behavior, or engages in violent acts on EHVI property shall be removed from the property as quickly and sa as safely as permits and shall remain off all Echoing Hills property pending the outcome of an investigation. Okay, there may be disciplinary action involved also, and many times we've even had situations where the police were involved. Let's talk a little bit about our weapons policy because this kind of dovetails into that. Uh, we do have a weapons policy in place. Okay, and there are specific weapons outlined in that policy. We can understand that there are concealed carry permits around the state of Ohio, and Ohio is a concealed carry state, okay? <clears throat> that does not authorize you to bring your weapon on company property, so just don't do it, all right? I don't bring mine on. I'm asking you not to bring yours on, or there will be repercussions about it, okay? Handguns include any handgun, regardless of size or intended purposes. Firearms include all guns, rifles, and other weapons. Okay, explosives. Do not bring any explosives on the property. And here's kind of an interesting thing. Weapons of any type includes knives with blades exceeding two and a half inches, nunchucks, so don't bring your nunchucks on here, billy clubs, brass knuckles, or any device designed to be a weapon regardless of size, visible or concealed, loaded or unloaded. Okay, unless carried by a law enforcement officer. Reasonable inspections. We are authorized to check your equipment on this. So, or your car, we can go in your car and make sure that you're not carrying a weapon inside there. If you are, it's going to be an issue. So don't even bring weapons in your car and say, well, my gun's in my car, so it's safe. If it's on company property, it is eligible for an inspection. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 
Your consent to an inspection is a condition of employment. An employee's refusal to consent to an inspection will subject that employee to disciplinary action up to and including termination of employment. Okay, bottom line is we can work through all this if we just work together. So just hang with us, use the disclosure, use some common sense, and we can keep everybody a lot safer. We do have a whistleblower procedure here at Echoing Hills Village. We have a company that we're contracted with to do that whistleblowing where you can call that company anonymously and report a situation that you're not comfortable with. Or you can call the corporate office uh, myself, okay? Here's the office, I have an extension there. I'm not gonna put my cell phone up here because uh, I get lots of calls on my cell phone anyways. So, but if you call the corporate office, they will give you my cell number or they will contact me and I will get back with you. It really makes sense to do this way instead of this way. You can go either way, okay? But here's what's gonna happen. If you call them, they're eventually gonna call me. Okay, so it's gonna end up on my desk. It makes a little bit more sense to me if you call me directly. I have had several calls over the last year, and I've been able to resolve those things internally. So uh, it does work. If you just reach out to me, I'll be happy to help. If you're not comfortable doing that, by all means, you do have a hotline that you can call to report things, and we will do an internal investigation. Yeah, this is kind of the procedure that goes through. If the complaint is about me, someone will investigate me and I will be excluded from the, uh, the investigation process. Okay, and again, uh, it's all set up at the corporate office. Uh, this is the procedure of how it works. And I will actually review the complaint and take a look at it and uh, do an investigation on it, and I'll do it very thoroughly. I honestly will, uh, because really the rule of thumb is we just want to do things right here at Echoing Hills Village. Okay, but it also can go up to board members. The president can actually be investigated. <clears throat> okay, and again, these are the balance of the steps, and you will get a response to your complaint if you decide to use the whistleblower's hotline. You will also get a response to your complaint if you contact me directly. Winter weather strategies, Tra Strategies. how's that work for you? Okay, as we approach the winter weather, there's gonna be some snow falling out there. There's gonna be some probably delays rather than closures at our day hab programs. So uh, one of the things we wanna remind you of, we're not gonna send you out in conditions that would be adverse to uh, driving in a safe environment, but you might think we are sometimes, but we're really not, we check that pretty thoroughly. So use caution on snow covered roads when operating vehicles. Make certain vehicles are at the adequate temperature for passengers. We don't want to put them in a really cold vehicle, so we're going to heat those up ahead of time and get them warmed up. And make certain when you take the individuals out, they are properly covered and prepared for extreme weather. So make sure they have no exposed extremities on their skin. Make sure they got their hats and scarves and everything on. Okay, we're to the part where we're going to do a couple questions here. So these are review. I wanted to make sure you have some takeaways today, so let's do these one at a time. Okay, the acronym HIPAA means A, happily inconsistent private Android availability, hope in a personal affordable account, hungry informative professional access action, or health information portability and accountability act. Obviously the answer to that question is D. Some of the personal identifiers of PHI, protected healthcare, include a person's address, their Medicaid number, their phone number, their medical records, or all of the above? Obviously, the answer is E, all of the above. It's okay to discuss protected health information at the local gas station, Walmart, Facebook, or none of the above? The answer is D, none of the above. EHVI has a weapons policy, protect employees and individuals, true or false? That's exactly true. We do have a policy and we do have a weapons policy in place and we just reviewed it a little bit ago. When securing a wheelchair, <coughs> individuals in vans, we should A, make sure they're using a four point tie down, uh, make certain that the individuals are facing the front of the vehicle, 
are using a shoulder strap when available or all of the above? It's D, all of the above. An individual can be positioned on a wheelchair <coughs> loading ramp either facing the vehicle or facing away from the vehicle. True or false? True, they can be loaded either way, whichever way makes sense to you. The best way to resolve a concern over a safety or compliance situation is share it with your supervisor, gossip about it in the break room, tell your mom and dad, or put it on Facebook. Okay, uh, the answer is share it with your supervisor first and they'll give you some direction for that. If you think your supervisor is really a mean person or you don't want to deal with them, then just go ahead and uh, call out the corporate office and ask for me and we'll have that discussion. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, that ends our last module of the Echoing Hills Village in-service training. Thank you.